Chapter 41. A Call to Struggle. During the first days of September 1939, Nusselar suffered the impact that affected many spirit colonies connected with American civilization. It was the beginning of the Second World War, and it would be as destructive in the physical sphere as it was disturbing on the spirit plane. Many spirits were trying to put the events of the war in perspective, unable to disguise their great horror. It had long been known that the great fraternities of the East were experiencing major difficulties and during the hostile vibrations of Japan. However, interesting events of high educative significance could be observed in Nasalar as well. Just as the noble spirit centers of old Asia were now fighting behind the scenes, our own colony had started preparing itself for the same kind of service. In addition to issuing valuable counsel regarding overall fraternity and sympathy, the governor also suggested that we ought to be careful within the sphere of our thoughts and safeguard ourselves from any unworthy inclinations of an overly emotional character. I realized that high-order spirits in such circumstances regard the aggressor nations not as enemies, but as hooligans whose criminal activity must be stopped. Unfortunate are the nations that get drunk on the wine of evil, Celestio told me. Although they may achieve temporary victories, such victories will only serve to lead them to their ruin, making their final defeat even more remarkable. When a nation starts a war, it is inducing disorder into the father's house, and it will pay a terrible price for it. I then began to understand that the higher zones of life turn in righteous defense against the wiles of ignorance and darkness that gather to spread anarchy and its resultant destruction. My fellow workers inform me that in events of this nature, aggressor countries naturally turn themselves into powerful nucleuses of centralization for the forces of evil. Without being aware of the immense dangers to which they are exposing themselves, such peoples, except for the noble and wise spirits in their midst, become intoxicated by their contact with the perverse elements that they have summoned from the dark realms. Once productive groups of individuals become automatons of crime, infernal legions descend upon the greater centers of collective progress, transforming them into areas of perversity and horror. But while the forces of darkness take hold of the aggressor's minds, spirit groups with noble intentions help the victims. If we should feel sorry for one individual that opposes the law of the good, so much the more should we pity an entire nation that has forgotten justice. At dusk, a few days after the first bombs had exploded on Polish soil, I was in the chambers of rectification with Tobias and Narcissa when the unforgettable clarion call was heard for over a quarter of an hour. We were all awestruck. That is the summoning from the higher planes to service in assisting the earth, Narcissa explained. It is a signal that the war will continue bringing terrible torment to the human spirit. Tobias forlornly exclaimed. In spite of the distance, the America's entire psychic life has its origins in Europe. We will have to work hard to save the new world. The clarion call continued its strange and magnificent modulations, and I noticed that a profound silence had fallen over the whole ministry of regeneration. Noticing my anxiously expectant attitude, Tobias stated, when the clarion call of alarm sounds in the name of the Lord, we must silence all noise so that its appeal may be engraved on our hearts. When the mysterious instrument sounded its last note, we went out onto the great plaza and looked up at the sky. I was amazed to see cloudless luminous points that looked like resplendent and distant little stars poised in the firmament. That clarion... Tobias said, equally moved, is used by the watcher spirits of the upper hierarchy. Returning to the chambers, my attention was attracted by loud noises from the highest areas of the colony, where the public streets were located. 
Tobias left Narcissa in charge of certain important activities concerning the patients and invited me to go out with him to watch the people moving about. When we arrived at the upper floors from where we could walk to the government center square, we noticed intense activity in all the sectors. Observing my natural curiosity, my companion explained, These huge groups are headed for the Ministry of Communication in search of news. The clarion call we heard just a while ago is only sounded in extremely serious circumstances. We all know that it was announcing war, but it's possible that the Ministry of Communication might provide us with some essential information concerning the event. Observe the passers-by. Close by, two men and four women were walking, engaged in excited conversation. Can you imagine what we in assistance will have to go through? asked one of the women. For months on end, the number of petitions have been extraordinary. It's been almost impossible to keep up with all the work. And what about us in regeneration? The older of the two men objected. Our entire workload has increased considerably. In my department, watching out for vibrations from the umbral has been requiring constant effort. I'm wondering what will happen to us next. Tobias held my arm lightly and exclaimed, Let us go on a bit and listen to what other groups are saying. As we approached two men, I heard one of them asking, Do you think this calamity will affect all of us? The older seemed to be well balanced spiritually and replied calmly, Well, I see no reason for jumping to hasty conclusions. The only thing new is an increase in work, which, as a matter of fact, is a blessing. As for everything else, it looks to me like everything is normal. Sickness is the teacher of health, and disaster enables us to become more balanced. China, for instance, has been under fire for quite some time now, and yet you haven't shown any signs of concern about it. But now, remarked his despondent companion, it seems that I will have to change my work schedule. The other smiled and said, Helvecchio, Helvecchio, let's forget my schedule and think of our schedules. I then looked to where Tobias was pointing and observed three women to our left heading in the same direction. It was all a picturesque scene, even on that evening of disquieting expectation. I'm really concerned about the whole affair, said the youngest one. Everardo just mustn't return from the world right now. I don't think the war will reach the Iberian Peninsula anyway. Portugal is very far from the theater of operations, said another. The third woman asked, but why are you worried about him? If Everardo did come here, what would happen? I'm afraid he would still regard me as his wife, explained the youngest. I couldn't bear it. He's such an ignoramus, and there's no way I could stand his cruelty again. Don't be silly, one of her companions replied. Have you forgotten that Everardo would be barred by the umbral, or some place worse? Tobias smiled and said, She fears the liberation of her thoughtless and cruel husband. After a few minutes during which we observed many spirits, we reached the Ministry of Communication and stopped in front of the enormous buildings used for information services. Thousands of individuals were nervously jostling one another. They all wanted information and explanations. Order seemed impossible. Extremely surprised by the loud clamor, I realized that someone had climbed to a high balcony and was asking for everyone's attention. It was an older man of imposing appearance who announced that within ten minutes the governor would issue a statement. It's Minister Espiriado, Tobias informed me, noticing my curiosity. The noise subsided, and after a few minutes we heard the voice of the governor through several loudspeakers. Brothers and sisters of Nasalar, do not indulge in disturbing thoughts and speech. Getting upset is not constructive. Anxiety will be of no use to us. We must be worthy of the clarion of the Lord, obeying the divine will by working quietly at our posts. That clear and compelling voice of someone who spoke with authority and love had a singular effect on the crowd. Within just one hour, the entire colony had returned to its normal state of calm.